episode of Chatty Broads with Becca and Jess. Oh, baby. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, this morning, I got a nice little text from old G-Dog saying that uh, he woke up with the flu or with food poisoning or something. It's coming out every which way. He is not feeling good. And so I um, decided, you know, I was thinking about calling a bunch of different celebs. I was thinking about calling maybe some rock stars, you know, just your run of the mill famous. And I thought to myself, there's no more powerful and meaningful person than the person who's sleeping next to me. And so I brought in the big guns and uh, <laughs> I, 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 I woke her up out of bed. I, I said, it's time to get back to work. So I brought in just a true, <sighs> a true legend oh of the God. game. It's like, you know, we, we asked the bros to do one episode <laughs> a week. You guys are, this is the second week in and I'm already getting called. And let me tell you what, I am, I cost too much for well, you all. And I'm, uh, you, you dragged me out of bed, drug me. I don't know how you say it. You dragged yeah. me out of my luscious bed. I was editing late night and for the love of God. <laughs> Listen, check your Venmo. You're going to be very happy. Okay, I paid you through the Chatty Broads account. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I used the Chatty Broads funds and I paid you. Okay, so just chill. I was like, you, my bank <laughs> you paid yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're so generous. I'm just kidding. I'm. I wanted to wear these sunglasses for a second to act like a total brat, but I'm excited to podcast Ooh. with you, even though I feel so bad for Gray. I know there it is sucks. nothing worse than food poisoning. Remember when I had food poisoning for like a week and a half straight? Well, well that's because it's you. And anytime you get sick, you don't get sick like a normal person. You, Are we you starting get... the podcast out on this? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying every time you get sick, it's not sick. It's like you get destroyed. Yeah. No matter what it is. Yeah. Anyone who gets like a sickness for two days, you have it for four. Yeah. And it's twice as bad. But when I had food poisoning that one time. Yeah. It was, remember the one I was like raw, it yeah, was it raw was just, chicken or something like well, that? Well, then they cha changed your perspective on chicken forever. Every time now she eats chicken, it's like she's looking inside of it. She's like I have peeling to, apart every piece to make sure there's not a single. Because it was like, oh, I'm about, I'm on death's door. Like it was a, two days in, I was like, this is still insane. I could not physically stand up. Because anytime I stood up, I would throw up. And that was like a week in. And I was just, I, you had to, my mom ended up taking Ember, remember? Because yeah. it was just like we couldn't function. And she was really, like she was a baby. Mm -hmm. And you had to physically pick me up and carry me to the ER. Like I could not even move. And then you had to hold me while they gave me a shot in my ass so that I could yeah. keep stuff down. Brutal. Brutal. And and. The thing but was I still so pretty? The yeah, whole and that's time. the thing is I, I was thinking to myself the whole time, like, should we do it right now? I was still so. Beautiful. I remember trying to make moves on you, and you were like, "Not now. Let's give me an hour. Let's get this shot." I'd be like, oh my god, no, not now, honey. I want to get beautiful. I'm going to get gorgeous You're for like, I'm you. Still so horny, <laughs> but I just need a second. Are you kidding me? I didn't get near you for a month. <laughs> yeah, like anything made me nauseous. Food poisoning is just your body's pushing the eject button on everything. I, know, I feel so bad for him when I saw his text. I was like, oh, it's the absolute worst. And then when there's the kiddos there too, and you're like, you know, they're like, Forget daddy, it. daddy. And they want to play. And you're just like, I am, everything is coming out. It's an absolute nightmare. It's the worst in the world. I'm so. going to take my sunglasses off. How, I'm not going to be a brat anymore. Could you be a, could you be a sunglasses in, inside person? You know, I was just about to say the reason I wanted to try out this look, yeah, yeah. you know, I wanted to see if I could be a new me is because I've been noticing lately on a bunch of podcasts that um that all these podcasters are wearing sunglasses. Is it like a hangover thing though? I don't think so. I mean, maybe, I, but a few of them are sober. It's it's I don't know if it's just like a late night thing. But they all go in now to these podcasts wearing sunglasses. And I'm a little bit like, okay, everybody, let's cool our jets. We're <laughs> podcasters, we're kind of embarrassing. We are not, this is not rock star situation. Right, this right. is not like, you know, I'm not one of the, the fucking Rolling Stones. You're not playing stadiums Ancient every night. reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rolling Stones. Like, what the hell? Like, if Harry Styles comes in, <coughs> if Harry Styles comes in and he's wearing, you know, 
yeah. some shades. You're sure, like, what a sure. god. Look, well, you, look at yeah. him. He's wearing shades. Of course he's wearing sunglasses. And he probably wouldn't even do that. Right. But then there's like these random podcasters who are like, I've hit a certain amount of downloads. So, yeah. It I mean, also all these helps. podcasters have hit more downloads than myself. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, don't get me but... wrong. <laughs> They're the modern day rock star. I mean, I guess. But I also feel like it really helps when you have an accent. Well, yeah. Because it feels like, oh, like, you know, you're just mysterious on many levels. On a scale of one to ten, how much hotter would you find me if I had a French accent? Because uh, I would find you way hotter if you had a British accent, if I'm being completely yeah, straightforward. No. If, if you got a French <laughs> accent. I mean, we, I, I actually wouldn't mind putting you in classes. Because I do feel like... You're like, I want you to start taking <laughs> Babbel or Rosetta Stone uh, just to learn it. But don't. I don't care if you learn the actual language. Right. Just pick up the accent. Exactly. Just I don't care about... I. Yeah, honestly, that's better. Because I won't be able to understand you. So speaking French will actually work against me. So just mm-hmm. get the accent. Go to like acting class. Get the accent down. Okay. Make it sexy so that, you know, <laughs> when we're fighting, it's just at least a little more fun for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, I'm thinking, oh, is she hot for me right now? Is she mad at me? I can't tell. Maybe she can't tell. You know, just because of the accent. <laughs> just because of the accent. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's a little seasoning on everything in life. You know what I mean? You just when you say anything in a French <laughs> accent, it sounds like you're saying "I love you." You know what's so funny is that until I listened to your and Gray's episode, and you guys were talking about accents, I had no idea that you had an affinity for a French accent. Oh yeah. I didn't know it's that. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a French accent is out of this world. I'm trying to think. Um, if I can do a British <laughs> accent for you, though. <laughs> like this. You said you wanted it, so there you go. You didn't specify. That one I'm actually fine with, too. Oh, shit. All right. Because that, that to me, is like the, the like, New Yorker version of got it yes the british accent it's the hard it's mm-hmm. the hardened um so to me that's the best of both bank worlds robber. you're combining new york with uh, which i'm neither sick <laughs> with the britishness mm. um you asked me before we started if you saw my uh the notes for the last episode that Becca yeah, and I so did yeah so let me let me just preface this a little bit you know i don't listen to every single chatty broads episode and, you know, because there's two a week and we're living lives and we're editing, we're doing stuff like that. And so you, sometimes you don't listen to every single part of every single episode. So what happens is, disrespect, and then what happens is, you know, sometimes I'll read, you know, Jess will send over the uh, episode description and I'll read through it to make sure we're good, whatever. And all of a sudden I just saw on the last one, Jess's new like love interest or love of her life or mm-hmm. something. So like, that. and I'm just like. It's always nice to hear these things, you know, to kind of find out Mm -hmm. that she's IA leaving me or has a has a side piece. I like to keep it exciting in our relationship and I like to keep you on your toes. Kind of like an Easter egg. A little bit. Right. It's like I'm gonna leave them around the house. Like seeing the phone open with the text with the lover. What is this? I'm just like that's, surprised. That's your version. For I know me. we've been together for 15 years, so I just thought I'd, you know, leave me a little spice something. It up a little yeah, bit. I, it was really fun for me. <laughs> so, 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 please, please tell me all about your new love. Um. Okay. I don't know how shocking this will be for you. I don't think it'll be too shocking. Uh, I am like a a deep level love, like. Level five. That sounds like an like level five sounds like five it's an out intense. Of what? I, I mean, out of five. Le- but I'm saying level five. That just sounds like something yeah. like in an emergency. You're like, it's level five, da well, da da, and you're I, just kind of like, okay, like that's. Well, to make that an actual real thing in the movie Twister, uh-huh. they say it's an F five, and that's a really big tornado. The amount of times you reference <laughs> Twister every week is unbelievable. Somehow there's a Twister reference every single week. It's because week. I went to this guy's house when I was a kid. We were best friends. And for some reason, he always had the VHS of Twister just rolling every day. Were you allowed to watch Twister when you were a kid or did your parents say? We had no issues with no. Twister. Twister was free. It was PG-13 though, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was violence. My parents were okay with violence. <laughs> just no boobs. If there was boobs or a fuck, movie's over. But if some Wait, dudes, you being, mean you mean sex or the word fuck? Both. Okay. So if there's sex, 
or um, swearing, the movie was off as a kid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I could be, I could watch someone be mowed down by like, a, you know, a, a like missile in a war movie, and my parents were just like, "Oh, great movie!" Yeah. So like the it, the I could get away. So as long as the movie was extremely violent or had any sort of traumatic stuff like that, they didn't care. They didn't care. I think my saw a butt movies off. <laughs> my mom, <laughs> my mom wasn't okay with the sex the swearing or the violence so there weren't a lot of options for me oh there was nothing she was okay but with. you know what I, I actually did appreciate that because i was like i can respect the fact that you have At a least problem there's with there's consistency you have a problem with all of it and like like i mean the it's ridiculous the fact that our families were raising us being like you can't hear a swear word you know or see a body yeah but you can watch this unbelievably violent traumatizing thing as a youth yes and that's good to go so i appreciated my mom's consistency there's consistency um i think it was just more my parents wanted to watch violent movies and liked war movies so they were okay with it and you think your parents didn't want to watch a sexy sexy yeah, movie you're probably right. my dad's on. in the other room like i just gotta check uh this movie out real quick for you make sure it's okay yeah, he's testing all the movies to make sure too much sex in that one evan i'm gonna go watch it again to make sure um that I didn't miss anything, but you're not allowed to watch that one. <laughs> all right, broads, interrupting the bros. Listen, every January, we all, us included, make those big lofty goals to commit to incorporating certain habits in our daily life or breaking habits we already have that aren't serving us. Maybe we want to get more sleep in 2022 or finally learn a second language or have a better outlook on things. All admirable goals. But when it comes down to it, seeing your goals through to the end can be really freaking hard. And if you've been there, done that, then you need to give Fabulous a try. It's been a total game changer for me. I love this app. I am really looking forward to using this app because I have been wanting to like have a year with distraction free, really focused on certain, well, not moving on distraction, totally free. Anyway, okay, <laughs> okay, let me tell you about how this helps though. Fabulous is the habit changing app that gives you the tools and skills you need to feel healthier, more productive and more fulfilled in a way that's proven to work thanks to behavioral science. So Fabulous focuses on self-improvement, mental and physical health, mindfulness and productivity to help make a daily routine that you like and you'll actually continue to do. And when you become a Fabulous Premium member, you'll get access us to daily coaching sessions that help keep you on track. Let me give you all an example. One of my goals this year and every year is to live a healthier, like overall lifestyle. I'm getting older and I want to keep my energy young. Uh, So (laughs) I put that into my fabulous tracker. I let them know. And it helps break that goal into a bunch of uh, other small tasks, like reminding me when I need to drink water, Mm. giving me a notification when I should get up and go for a little walk, and even letting me know when it's time to unplug for the night, which has been very helpful. Uh, Suddenly becoming healthier, which is this huge, vague goal goal is bite-sized and it actually feels attainable start building your ideal routine today with fabulous premium get 25 percent off fabulous premium by going to thefab.co slash chatty that's t-h-e-f-a-b dot c-o slash chatty for 25 percent off fabulous premium that's fab.co slash chatty so there are certain things in the world that are just too difficult for most of us to understand, you know, things like astrophysics or the time space continuum. That's fine. We can leave that to the experts. But everyone, everyone should understand how they feel, why they feel that way, and how to feel their absolute best. And thanks to Everly Well, everyone can learn more about their bodies and take control of their health and wellness on their own time. Everly Well is the company offering affordable at-home lab tests that give you trusted results reviewed by a physician. So there are a lot of tests to choose from. Everything from food sensitivity to heart health to sleep and stress. So many more. And all you have to do is pick out a test. Every well, Everly Well will ship them straight to your door with everything you need for collection. And after you take the test, return the test to Everly Well's certified lab with the prepaid shipping label. It's really, really easy. Then a physician will review your tests. And in just a matter of days, the results are sent to your device. Um, I just ordered the sleep and stress test because I was curious and I'm so excited to get the results. And they have so many. They have a massive variety on EverlyWell.com. You should just go check it out. Um, but I love it because normally these tests from a doctor's office could be very expensive and with Everly Well you can do that uh, with a good price and on your own time too and on your own time for listeners to the show Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20 per- 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash chatty that's everlywell.com slash chatty for 20% off your at-home lab tests everlywell.com slash chatty um 
well, what was, oh, the love of my life. Oh, yeah, let's get back to this. Okay, so yeah, I don't think that you're going to be too surprised, but maybe you're going to be surprised at the fact that I'm at Twister level five with okay, this person. Okay, F5, got it. Yeah, this is like, you know how um, it was like, it's not quite like Spike from Buffy for me because that was that was I mean, a lifetime. That was, and it still is a lifelong That's a career for love. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is kind of like um, when I was in love with the guy who was in the Hannibal movie. Sure, okay. Um, not actually Hannibal Lecter. I'm not that much of a creep. But... Jason Sudeikis. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I, I could see that. My question is, what just happened? Well, you know how we started to watch Ted Lasso? See, here's the problem. <laughs> Everyone out there, you got to be careful of the shows because they sneak up on you. You know what I mean? I've fallen in love with people on shows too. Well, I br- But with Jess, it's like, she's the classic. You don't see it coming. I mean, of all people too, Ted Lasso. Well, but it's not, it wasn't that it was... Hey, how's it going? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Ding, 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 ding. Like, that is what made you fall in love with Ted no, Lasso? No, 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 You're Jason Sudeikis. Let's not mix them up. Sorry. You know what I mean? They're sorry. two very <laughs> yeah, different yeah, people. I'm sorry. Jason um, Sudeikis. No, I, no, it wasn't Ted Lasso that did oh. it. It was just Ted Lasso that reminded me of Jason did you, Sudeikis. Did you then go down a rabbit hole? I went down a massive Sudeikis Okay, so you're just watching hole. just Sudeikis porn, basically. I was watching every single interview of him. Ugh. And I was watching Jesus. all of his SNLs. I was I was in so deep. And so you're like, sorry, babe, I'm working a lot today. Yeah, Meanwhile, like, you're just, just four hours into so Sudeikis. <laughs> I was in so deep. Well, you know, it was like during my whole tooth trauma. I was I was doing a lot of just like Sudeikis in bed, uh, you know, having a lot of pain on a lot of pain meds, and I was just going down a massive Jason spiral. Was there a little bit of sympathy, kind of like he was left for Harry, and there's a little bit of like the fact that, you know, he's now his, his ex is now with the most famous, attractive rock star on the planet. Where there was a little bit of like, well, who's he have? No, absolutely okay, not. Got I've all. <laughs> 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 I've always had a crush on Jason Sudeikis. I get it. I get it. He's hilarious, but he's also handsome and he's also like kind of vulnerable. He's warm. I get it. Yeah, he's, he's very warm. warm. He's vulnerable, but he's I don't know. But but I will say the whole Olivia Harry thing makes it better to me because I just love the fact I I was saying this on the podcast. I love the dynamic between Jason Sudeikis and Olivia Wilde and like they have still like you, you can just see in interviews and everything. They still have a beautiful respect for each other. They, you know, they love their kids and they still care about each other. And then I just love that she is now dating like the biggest rock star in the world, the guy who can wear the glasses inside mm-hmm. and it's appropriate. And you know, Jason, Jason's now dating someone. So uh, I was like, there's not that option for me, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Yeah, and I'm sure that I feel like you'd be okay with Jason Sudeikis though. If I was like, hey. You mean like a hall pass? Yeah, probably. Like if I was, let's just say I was <laughs> at the grocery store God. and I was in the produce area and I was feeling the veggies and all of a sudden Sudeikis came up and like. Feeling the veggies <laughs> like rubbing the cucumbers? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> what the hell? Who says feeling the veggies? You mean buying veggies? He's feeling the veggies. You got two cantaloupes. You're massaging them. You got a, you got like a, like a cucumber in between them, and you're just like making this orgy by yourself. And then Sudeikis comes by, and he's like, "Wow, you're busy over here." Yeah, exactly. You freak. <laughs> Is that what you do when you go to the grocery store? You feel the veggies. Feels the veggies. Oh, you mean to test yeah, the you firmness? Yeah, you, you squeeze <laughs> the fruits and the veggies. I guess you feel the fruits a little more. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't really. I don't like. Yeah. I don't like squeeze a broccoli. You don't cup the broccoli. <laughs> no, I don't. Unbelievable. <laughs> Saying if I was there, testing out produce, and Sudeikis bumped into me. And he was just like, oh, hey. And we struck up a casual conversation. And he was like, well, you, you know, grab a bite to eat with me on Wednesday. And I came home and I was like, Evan. He's like, yeah, will you grab my cucumber? Oh, my God. He would never. Well, I'm just saying. He would like, absolutely never. That is so not anything Jason would ever, <laughs> ever say. You pervert. Um, don't he, uh, <laughs> Don't you do not ever disrespect Jason's name. Um, no, I feel like if I, if though he asked me, it was like, yeah. hey, would you grab a quick bite with me yeah uh next week and i came home and i said hey babe so 
you will never believe this. I was in the grocery right. store and Jason Sudeikis asked me to grab a quick bite. I feel like you'd be like, go for it for the no, story. Absolutely not. Here, here's <laughs> here's <laughs> why I wouldn't be okay with it. For the story? Well, I don't I wouldn't care do about the story. Okay? Yeah, but, but what an amazing Here, no, story. No, a great story. Um, here's the problem with it. Uh-huh. I'd be much more okay with a hall pass situation if it's someone who's kind of like fantasy, like crazy fling. Sadek is his husband material. He has husband You know material. what I'm saying? So like if yeah. you were like, oh yeah, like Harry Styles. You don't think Harry Styles is husband material? Uh, he is, but I'm saying he's a lot more like rock star, kind of like unreachable. So it's like if all of a sudden I was at this club or I was at this event and then we, we, we hooked up, then it's like I'm a lot more like okay with the like fantasy crazy one-off thing whereas like can i go to dinner with this guy that seems like total husband material you know what i'm saying like that's a very different that. like animal yeah so absolutely not <laughs> just on the record right here sudeikis you're off the list well i'll let you know that in the episode yesterday i talked about how my sudeikis is your kira knightley and oh. i would if if you Kira Knightley saw you squeezing the produce at a grocery store and asked you to dinner. <laughs> she saw me fooling around <laughs> with a cucumber and thought to myself, wow, that guy looks like a good time. Yeah. If 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 that was the case and she asked you out, mm -hmm. I would be like, you gotta you gotta go for it. You gotta you gotta do it for the story. But like I guess I just feel like and by the way, I you know I don't know what Kira Knightley's vibe is this way. This is all like see this that that's a little different because Sudeikis is like your modern crush. Kira Knightley was my like high school crush. No, Kira Knightley, Evan, has been like a lifetime for you. Like, sure, in movies especially. That's her what I'm saying. Like, yeah. all of a sudden we'll see a movie with her again, and it's just every time we see a movie with Kira Knightley, it all comes rushing back it's for you, like, and you're just film. like, and you're like, I'm. What are you on Rotten Tomatoes? Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Still good. I mean, I don't know what people are talking about. <laughs> you just get so caught up in it. Yeah, when I'm, you're it's, with a, her. I'm, it's a whirlwind. Yeah. No, she sweeps you off okay. your feet. But here's the thing, though. Then who's your modern no, no, no. Jason Sudeikis? Uh, let's, let's, let's stay with this. My problem is that these are people you fall in love with. These are not people yeah, that you Yeah, you fall in love with Karen. That's what I'm sure. saying. Like These are not people that like you should you or I should be okay with either of us going out with. Because this is not like, oh man, like, you know, this famous rock star or this like unreachable pop. Sing it's where it's something a little bit more flingy. This is like, you know, marriage material. Well... So it's then like I, then I start a relationship with Jason. Then you start one with Kara, and we can all just. You think they'd be done to have, downgrade their lifestyle to hang out with us? I don't know <laughs> what you <laughs> think like, of yourself, yeah. but I think very highly of myself. No, I'm talking about in my day to day life. No, I'm yeah, yeah I'm sitting talking about in my like, living room on my computer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, um, hey, I know you like um, your mansion and all, but wouldn't you like to get cozier in our? I'm little... sure they would. <clears throat> yeah, you know. Well, you're very optimistic. It's very sweet. I am. Um, I'm just really, you know, 2022 is my year of new things. So I'm mm. just saying for the sake of the story that I would say you just, we all just have to go for it. Just Got for it. the sake of the story. Right. Is it risky? Is it a risky move? But risk. No risk. Sure. No reward. No risk. No reward. No risk. No story. That's true. And I live for a good story. Here's what I would say. You know that that's my lifeline. It's I would, a good story. Yes, I agree. I, love I, I, would to, have, I would let you go to dinner with him. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if I had, if I was the, the person making the call. Okay, don't twist. I, I like how you ask me, would you let me? And then when I say I would let you, you go, well, thank you for giving me the permission. <laughs> you, uh, that's, you know what? I've had enough. I, I, I recant. Well. <clears throat> would you let me? I just said I would. For you for real though. Yes, for for the sake. Oh, let me text her then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said yes. We can be together. Wait, blah, is blah. she though your modern day? Is is she still? <sighs> would you consider her your modern day Sudeikis? Mm. Or is there someone else? I'm trying to think. Modern day. I feel like I. Oh, I feel like I haven't seen many movies lately, so I haven't really been caught up. I feel like you new... um, were really like swept up with Rooney Mara. Was that who it was for a while? Or oh, you know what? It's another one of those. I have some character actors that I like like that. Like Rooney yeah. Mara um, in some of her movies. Mm -hmm. You know, she's very like mad. You know, I, I get I get taken. Um, <laughs> I get pulled, you know, I get pulled into the ether. Um, you know, because 
beauty is fine, you know. We, you know beauty is fleeting, but mm -hmm. you know that 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 magical that spark. magical zest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't really. You think Becca's a little more like that, from what I heard yesterday when we discussed it. That she's a little more like character actor, right? Like that's where she gets caught up in, and I I really get to know the person. But you're kind of. I mean, Sudeikis is similar. No, he's not. He's like Jason Sudeikis plays Jason Sudeikis. No, well, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I didn't mean my character actor. I mean more like he's a get to know. Like if you saw Jason Sudeikis on the like on a poster, you'd be like, oh, good looking guy, but you wouldn't think about it. But then you see him do his thing, and then yeah, you're like, wow, course. there it is. As of opposed course. to like, more, more what I'm getting at is like the Chris Hemsworths are like the you see them and you go, oh my god, and then yeah. like I wouldn't really necessarily say that like I don't find him their on screen personalities change whether you find, you know what I mean. Even though I remember I didn't I did uh, stand that one time in line next to him at Starbucks. Remember Hemsworth? Yes. He is impossibly tall and broad and good looking. Oh, he he's there's like, certain people you're just kind of wondering like what happened there. Yeah, you're like, oh God hates me when you when you stare at that right. person. You're just kind of like, oh, it's good to know the creator of the earth despises me in comparison to you. Yeah, there are some people you're in the, when you walk by or just random, not even celebrity, just random person you walk by and you're kind of like, how's that? How is that a thing? And then I'm a thing. Yeah, I not because you think that you look bad, but they're just no, levels. No, sometimes you're like, I just don't understand. Like I don't get it. Like what's that like? Yeah, what a wild world. To like to, to be, be to be so what, because there are some people that it's just like everyone finds them attractive. That's like what it I doesn't mean. matter objective. what your type is. It's just like everybody. It's objective, attractive. Like to be the type of person who you walk in a room and everyone's just like you are the most good looking human being. Yeah, I've everyone kind of like sits up straight a little bit and they're like, oh, how do I look? I don't know. Or everyone okay. shudders. Yeah, because oh. it's like a, a literal god just walked into the room. Yeah, Chris Hemsworth was like that. Sure. It was like he walked into Starbucks and everyone was just like, and at that point he had just done like one movie. He wasn't, oh, he wasn't super big. famous yet. So but he was kind of popular. He was known, but it was he wasn't like how right. he is now. And everyone was just like, oh my God. And he's, you know, he's an Aussie. He's very friendly. So he was so nice whenever just. Oh it, yeah. And the fact that he's an Aussie is even more unfair. Yeah, yeah. It's like now he has the cool accent. I know, but not my vibe. You know right. me. Not it's as not much as your thing. thing. To, I'd prefer Sudeikis. To surfer bro, you're more into the city guy. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like, uh, actually Jason is way friendlier than what I would normally go for. You know me, I kind That's of like someone He's, who's a grumpy. He, I bet he has a lot more edge in oh, real life. You're making it better. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Because I'm taking the power back. You know, if you start going, hey man, that Jason Sudeikis, wow. I mean, I'd go on a date with him. Then all of a sudden... It starts mm -hmm. to, I think, I think there tends to be a little bit more romance if the person's like, don't go, don't go. So I actually, I can't go for it. Have a blast. Mm -hmm. How fun would it be to just go to New York right now? You want to go to New York? And just stroll around the city together. It actually does sound really nice. Mm -hmm. Haven't been in New York in a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been many years. How is New York right now? I don't know how it is in regards to the COVID stuff. Is it all shut down? I or think if it's open? I mean, it's it's bad. Yeah, most it's bad everywhere, everywhere right now, right? especially in all the cities. But maybe in a few months we can go to New York and have a That'd romantic time in New Ooh, York. Oh, I like that. Because it's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute. I love our child so much, but it has been a hot minute since there was a romantic getaway. <laughs> Somebody help us. <laughs> <laughs> As I sit here uh, on a podcast with you, That's realizing true. that my sweatshirt is covered in stains, I was pulled out of bed. I did do my makeup, yeah, but I was true. pulled that out of bed. True. So you please don't judge my my stained I sweatshirt. I literally pulled her out of bed. I was like, babe, you got to do this podcast for me in five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Grace puking. Help. Um, but, okay, speaking of that, though, I know a lot of the broads, are now happily tuning into the bros talking about yeah. The Bachelor. Yes. And you and Gray were going to recap yes. uh, Monday's episode, but I'm so sorry. I will not be recapping yes. it with you because I will be saving it until we do our live show yes. but, at but, the finale of Clayton's season. But me and Gray will next week catch back a, up for this week and next week's sure, for Friday. Sure. But in the meantime, I'm here. Yes. Last minute. 
<laughs> last minute bringing you joy and cheer I'm talking about lovers okay didn't expect that this early in the morning well you you asked because you looked at my at the notes yeah that's true i kind of so, i could have ignored it i didn't bring it up to you um at an earlier date because i didn't want to ruin ted lasso for you i didn't want you to when we were watching it for you to be thinking about it so i did it for you you know here's the thing i think i wonder what the deal is there because i will have a crush on a girl in a show and tend to watch that show alone you will have a crush on the show on a guy in the show i will not know it during the entire show <laughs> and then at the end be like by the way i'm in love with that guy and i'm just like wait what the whole time like that happened with the elect hannibal there was a guy in the in the show that she was in love with we, i loved the show we were watching the whole thing and then all of a sudden it was at the end it was just like oh my god i had the biggest crush on him the whole time and i'm going going is there like what is the difference there um i sure don't know i feel like i told you pretty no, you know what show? I have a huge crush on the guy, huh. and you knew from the get because I've always been in love. Huh. Is uh, Peaky Blinders, Killian Murphy? Of course, but you've you've liked him since way before we watched the show. So if, if I going so into it youth. knowing you like, but you know, sitting next to you not knowing <laughs> that love is happening, you know, <laughs> kind of slowly falling in love. Mm -hmm. And then there's those shows where you both fall in love, like Bridgerton. Oh yeah, that's great. You that's a great. I mean? That's a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. That was a, we were both in love with the characters. That, 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 that's a wonderful feeling. That's yeah. a wonderful feeling. Um, speaking of, I wanted to ask you: um, Have you seen that Megan Fox and MGK are officially engaged? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you see the post that she put out? No, but I'm sure it was like I am weed. Well, kind I of. am blood. I am love. You're very close. We must combine our DNA now, I and wanna... create super creature. <laughs> I want a super creature. <laughs> they shall be seven feet tall. Everyone will be lusting after them. They will they will escape no one's desires. Thank you. Good night. You're not far from the truth. Okay, so I wanted to read this to you. So that she posted a video of the of him proposing to her. You know, there's like 12 cameras set up. because it So it's like, what a shock. And you're like, okay, well. Yeah, I did see a quick clip of it. And I was kind of like, oh my God, this is so like. Well, and they're in she's like. She's just like, what? What are we doing at the top of this mountain? <laughs> and there's seven cameras here. It's and a they're bit all like, like fully, you know, in full. Yeah. I, but they're dressed quite intensely. But I feel like they all also always are. So I yeah. like, can't quite tell at that. But um, okay. So at the very end of what I'm about to read to you, I need to read the whole thing. It's important. Um. I want to know with the last sentence that I read, do you think this is, do you think she's saying this as a joke? Like, is she saying this because she knows how they come off and she's part, she's in on the joke Got about it. them or is this real? Got it. Okay. She says, in July of 2020, we sat under this banyan tree. We asked for magic. We were oblivious to the pain we would face together in a, such a short, frenetic period of time, unaware of the work and sacrifices the relationship would require from us, but intoxicated off of the love and the karma. Somehow, a year and a half later, having walked through hell together and having asked and having laughed more than I ever imagined possible, he asked me to marry him. And just as in every lifetime before this one, and as in every lifetime that will follow, I said yes. And then we drank each other's blood. A thousand percent they drank each other's blood. Really? You think so? A thousand percent. Gross. Yeah, a hundred percent. See, I thought maybe they're like she's in on the joke. Because it's clear that the two of them are trying so hard to be Billy Bob and Angelina. Like they sure. were wearing the, the vials and and you know... They do these lives together, and it's just so over the top. I wonder if they opened up the vials and drank them. Like, that was what they did. That's, I feel... A hundred percent. A hundred percent they I'm did. I'm going to have to put my feet up. You know I'm getting lightheaded thinking about it. Here's... Because here's the difference. Here's the... <laughs> Are you actually feeling sick? Yeah, I'm getting a little lightheaded. <laughs> I can't really put my feet up. I'm in a podcast from down here. Okay. Oh my God, this and, is tough. And for all people thinking this is kind of like an act, this is so not an act. Like the other day I cut my um, finger wide open and I, I came in, I'm like, Jess, I cut it pretty bad. And just me saying I cut it bad, she had to put her feet up. And she was like, I'm so sorry you're on your own. So. I get that cold. This is real. I'll this never is, be able to help you if you ever get her. I'm no. so sorry. I'll have to, if 
have someone else on speed dial. You know, Ember actually would be so good. She's she not would. freaked out by any. She loves like, looking at it. Oh God, it's making me feel so sick now thinking about that <laughs> cut and about them drinking the blood. So I 100% think they did drink their blood. I also think that like the difference between like Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob back in the day was like, this is before social media too. So there was no posting. They did this stuff because they were actually like wild nowadays with these two it definitely feels like you don't think the angelina and billy bob thing was a little bit for show not really i think they were i don't think billy bob was like a show guy billy bob never (laughs) (laughs) billy bob like was crazy about it like he was he was just a wild man and i feel like with mgk and and megan fox like they never really did any of this stuff before so the fact that it's like all of a sudden like just now all of a sudden were these like blood sucking you know like they're vampires vampire like children it's a little bit like (laughs) out of nowhere like you know what i mean it's just a little bit much it's like a little bit of a pr deal yeah i feel like um i don't know i feel like they both have been that way she's been like witchy for a long time oh she has okay and maybe they are then and he's the emo kid right i will say it doesn't bother me I like both of them. Yeah, it doesn't bother me how crazy they are. But I, I, I like both of them. But I, I hate what's happening. You hate the like just over because the top. it makes me feel so uncomfy. Like it makes me, my body cringe because it just feels so like it feels so like we're trying to be these people. And yeah. anytime I get that vibe off of someone, it just it makes me like really uncomfortable when I, people uh, don't. When it seems like they're not trying, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> then. So like them separately, I get that they're this way, but just watching them in interviews together yeah. makes me really uncomfortable. Or the way that they're looking and she's like, "I do what Daddy tells me," and he's just like, "Yeah, I would just, I would just wish I could just." Or he's like, "And I sat there and just took in her air," and they're just yeah. staring at each other, yeah. and I'm just like, "Oh my gosh!" But it's like that a- couple that you're on a trip with yeah. that will start ma- stop making out like right on top yes. of you, and you're like, "For the love of God, can you please stop?" Good for them, bad for everyone else. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, seriously, but great but, for their career. But then at the same time, too, this this post that she posts now has me all sorts of curious because the first half of the post was like, "We decided to." come into each other's lives and it was like hell on earth for a year like we had no idea how much karma and hardship i'm like karma what happened what did you guys do i honestly think they had three fights and then they're like you know that <laughs> like it's like a post you can't make a post like things have been great i love him especially if their brand is like blood sucking vampire demons <laughs> like you gotta go like the first year was pure hell you know like you gotta make it dramatic it's, how's the, okay. how's speaking of blood? How you how we doing? I'm okay. I'm a little bit lightheaded. Look at do I look pale to you? No, you look good. Okay, you look good. <laughs> That's also if you haven't noticed by now, Broads, Jess is very much a uh, self diagnoser. So she definitely will like within an hour be like, actually, I think I have this. <laughs> I won't stand for this conversation. I know, you know I have it. Okay, speak as a little side thing. Do uh-huh. you know who's single now? No, who? Jason Momoa. I saw Lisa Bonet. Heartbreaking. They were together for like 16 years or something or seven years. I don't know how long. Honestly, long time. that's one that's like really upsetting that's crazy. to when me. You, like when you think they can't last, you're like no one can last. It's very upsetting to me. And I I like him. I love her. Yeah. And she is also the mother of another love of my life, Zoe Kravitz. Right. <sighs> I'm very sad for them. There's certain people that like, when they break up, you just know it's like the floodgates are coming. Like the amount of people that are going to be like, hey, uh, oh, we'd love I to take know. you to dinner. I mean, you I just know. the um, like there's certain like, you know what I mean? Like, I know those I know, two. I know. But their their post, it was so it was, they have love for each other. They do. It was a Jason Olivia situation. You know it what was I mean? Total, it was the opposite <laughs> of MGK. And- oh, my gosh. When they end up breaking up. Because let's be very clear. Here. It'll just be who survives. It, <laughs> let's be very clear. The two of them, they will break up. You think? You never know. They, there's no way. It burn, it, it's burning too hot. It's burning way too hot. Like when, when you just get back into normal life in a couple years, you just like. It's like when I've seen them in interviews, it's like the way that they talk about it. It's all so intense. It's just like, oh my God, like. When we fight, like, it's just like 
fire and hell and da 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 da. But then he's my Two sweet demons. baby boy afterward. And you're just like, it's just a lot. And you're like, this feels toxic to me. This feels very intense and 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 heavy on the toxic end and heavy on the dependency end. And this will end in a complete disaster. I like the idea. I like this. I have a fantasy of them of like, you know how she was on the red carpet and she's like. You know, he called me and he said, you're going to be naked tonight. And I said, whatever you say, daddy. And he's like, I'm going to drink her blood. And, da, da, da. and then like, I just like the idea of like them doing all this stuff and then getting home and just being like, what do you want to eat tonight? <laughs> it's just so boring. Fried chicken or what? No, you, you said, you don't, you said you liked it. <laughs> all right, fine. Well, sushi. No. Do you like, is it everything I do <laughs> that drives you crazy? We got to go to that red carpet thing. Fast forward 20 minutes later. And I let daddy eat my skin in order to take me with and digest me because I want to be his fuel. Two hours later, it's just like, oh, my God, that person was so they annoying. Did. They take, oh, it. They take it's all, like, their, like, all their outfits and all their like pounds of jewelry yeah. off and they're just in like gross sweats. And, yeah, and they're just, just like, kinda, can you just give me five? And they're just watching reality TV. Yeah. And like they have sex for like two minutes in the same position, like yeah. once a week. That's yeah. like what their life actually looks like. That's what I'm, that's the that's probably the more realistic side. I, of be, I there is a part of me that believes when people are so like that that that's more likely what it is. Yeah, it's like when you're when you're perf- it's like a performance. You're performing so heavy. I'll never forget being. This is also a little bit upsetting now that I think about it. But um, I'll never forget knowing a family friend growing up so like friends of my parents right, a couple right. that i was like they are the most buttered toast boring proper people and they were just and a par- and i found out later in life that they were <laughs> wild in the bedroom they were like whipping and ball like, gagging like like all like all of like the family you know all the other christian parents were just very like well you know like it there was the you know, lord has brought us yeah, the, plenty <laughs> this year the, the, the lord is you know they did de- the lord desires us to be together so here we are and the two of them were just swinging from the rafters every night Okay, broads, interrupting the bros one more time. When it comes to dinner time at my house, flexibility is key. Some nights a school function for my daughter may run late, and we've got 45 minutes before a hangry meltdown ensues. Some nights I was planning for pasta, but now I'm craving tacos. And some nights I want to try a completely new recipe that I've never tried before. It really doesn't matter what life throws at me because I can use HelloFresh, which means I'm ready for anything in the kitchen, that is. When you sign up for HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. No more grocery lists. No more recipe hunting. Just good food, done right, ready to eat in no time at all. And it may seem counterintuitive that you'll actually be saving money when you make these gourmet level meals at home. But actually, the savings are huge. Mm -hmm. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And on average, you'll save over $65 a month on your grocery bill because HelloFresh delivers only what you need and nothing more, which also means less food waste. Yes, HelloFresh has uh, 50 menu plus market items to choose from each week with options that are family friendly, vegan and more. My favorites from my last uh, delivery was either the white cheddar Wonder Burgers or the hibachi sweet soy steak and shrimp. Ooh. Ember loved that one so much. Uh, they were both so delicious and so simple to make. All I had to do was follow the recipe card included in my delivery. Eating good has never been easier than it is with HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Chatty16 and use code Chatty16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Chatty16 and use code Chatty16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts today. Fun fact. Uh, bedroom. Did you hear this this whole Drake rumor going on? Yes. Okay, I don't know if this I is... I just read it yesterday. Okay, I don't know if this is confirmed. <laughs> How insane is that? So apparently, and again, no idea if there's conf- There's not confirmation on this, but it's this rumor that went around from some gossip column, whatever, that apparently Drake was having sex with this woman... It, and it, the, it was like the the article is from the it seems like it was like f- 
from the woman or something. And she was talking about how they were having consensual sex. And she even mentioned that he was like checking in and everything. And, and, uh, and so they have sex. She gets into details or someone gets into details, details about his piece and all sorts of things. But then <laughs> yeah, the, it was like so unnecessary. Like the little it's almost like she knew the fans would want to hear it. It's so it true. Like, she's giving the people what she's they're giving curious the people for. What they're curious about. Uh, but uh, then the most important part is apparently he was using a condom after he has he finishes penetration, pulls out, goes to the bathroom, dumps the condom, comes back out. She in then, the trash can. In the trash can. She then goes into the bathroom after he leaves and takes the condom and shoves the sperm yes. into her self to attempt to get pregnant because yes. Drake's child. Right. Um, and she said all of a sudden she feels this wild burning and she starts freaking out and screaming. Apparently Drake put hot sauce in the condom to then kill the sperm yeah. afterwards. I mean, that is such a specific Do you think move. that it's real? Um, I don't know if it's actually real. Yeah. But what I will say, it doesn't matter if it's actually real. I believe it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, totally. Because it's like, that, that's called a guy who has sex all the time with different women. I and mean, he's probably... He's probably seen it all. You but know what I mean? hot sauce. It's like he just happens to have a pack. It's like... I will say it's... The story's so weird... That's what makes it that feel... That it's like... Wh- no one would make up that. That's like, what would make makes up it different feel things. real to me. Right. That's what makes it feel real to me is how bizarre it is. I'm just like hot sauce. Like why wouldn't this man just like fill up... Fill up the 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 condom like a balloon with water and just do like a quick, quick rinse and like... Right. Because you're already like pulling a pack. Like imagine... Because so you're like... Oh, you take it off and you're <laughs> like sitting there. But you set it on the thing. But you don't want it to spill. So you like get right there. And then you're like... Okay, like, let me get them. And there's like... Uh, and you get it out and you're like, you like and then you like tie it up and put it away. as opposed to just like yeah grab it fill it with water wash it out and throw it away it's kind of the same yeah uh, maybe maybe it's like a test for him like he's testing you know what i mean he goes if i hear her scream then i know she was trying to it's, it's a way to it's a way to like expose to gauge whether like I, they, whether he's gonna hook up again yeah or just like it's almost like if you um you leave the cash I mean, out on the counter when your friend comes uh-huh, over, and then uh-huh. you check the amount later and see if he took any money, so there's I think just it's like that there's version. just like mouse traps everywhere yes. around his, his whole house is just like full of booby traps. His whole life is probably mouse traps, and he's a really smart guy too. So I could totally see him like setting up traps for everybody, including. I don't know lots about Drake, to be honest. Well, I mean, think about it. he's the most successful like well, artist I'm, in the yeah, world. Yeah, I mean, sure. So yeah, yeah, he's yeah, super yeah, smart. Yeah. He has brand deals all over. Yeah. The place. So he's got to have like seen it all, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna this. Maybe he was like, this girl's giving me vibes like something's gonna happen bad or she's gonna try to do something so i'm gonna yeah it's just always so interesting to me like considering that like all of these artists make everyone sign all the ndas before having sex that they don't just have ndas about if someone gets pregnant i don't know it just doesn't i don't know either it's just interesting to me but because i think an nda isn't as like it doesn't or I know that that's not what an NDA is, but that if they're going to sign an NDA, that they would also be signing like all these like, right. you know, just a couple pieces of paper. Right. Involving like, you know, I don't, I don't know. know. That is that is so wild to me when I hear I my mind is always so blown when I hear some of these NDA stories and some of these like I'm always I know very frequently when you go to, you know, parties like this yeah. that you have to leave your cell phone at the door and all I think about is, oh, my God, if we go to one of these parties, like, I can't leave my cell phone. Like, what if the babysitter calls? That's all I can think of. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, what about Ember? Exactly. It gives me it gives me incredible anxiety. It's like when I go to, like, if I go to a day spa and they yeah. make you put your phone in the locker. Yeah. I'm just like, I cannot walk around with my phone. Like, what, if, yeah. what, if, what if Ember's school calls The me? other day I went to this, like, um, kind of a premiere of a show thing. And, uh. They made us put our phones in the locker. Or, sorry, not locker, but uh, you know those pouches so yeah. that you can't call or text or video anything? Yes. And I'm just thinking to myself like... What if there's an emergency? There's so many people in here that are going to get out of this thing and they can be like, oh my gosh, I got to go right now. Yeah. I mean, also <clears> like <throat> now I know that you went to that premiere and that you didn't like let me know that your phone was in that thing. What if I would have been calling you like crazy? Because I didn't know it was going to be in the thing. 
<clears throat> well, I'm all of a sudden in the line. Well, next time it happens, send me a quick texty, or else I, you, Lord knows, been... you know that I was in our house checking out ghosts on my new app around our home. <sighs> And what if something would have happened that That's really true. scared me and I needed to call you? Right. So next time, send me a quick text, please, before Sorry, you babe, go I can't into answer your before ghost you go call. And, and, and and hook up with Drake or whatever you're doing. <laughs> no, I was with Sudeikis. Okay. Okay. Um, speaking of my phone, I went on and I posted a little Insta story and asked people if they wanted to ask us questions. Let's do we it. Are recording together, so yes, yes, yes. yes you want to yes, hop into this please. biz? <laughs> okay first one <laughs> wow the broads are really coming out hot right out of the gate what does evan think of your love of balls on the face i love it <laughs> i'm a big fan I'm grateful for that. It it really wouldn't work out if you didn't like it. I'm just like, oh, again? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Merry Christmas. It's my favorite thing to randomly drop. Yeah, you love bringing that up because you don't present like you're a person that like likes balls on her face. I don't know what that means. Like no, you're I'm just, sweet I'm not, I'm and not, like, I'm, you know, you're just not like. I just like to drop it because it's it's very specific and it's something that i really really like a Bros, lot don't get it twisted okay <laughs> <laughs> that sweet demeanor you're getting there's something going on <laughs> okay no <laughs> I, you know what's so funny is i remember i got a message a long time ago um a dm yeah I, you'll remember this because it really it <laughs> sometimes you get a dm like i'll get mean dms sometimes yeah. and for the most part i feel like i've learned to just kind of like write it off but sometimes you'll get one that'll just bug you Zing ya. and it, this one bugged me because i was like do i am i this way mm. i remember um i remember this dm saying something along the lines of you play this part of this wild, this wild cat in the bedroom, but we all know you're vanilla as shit. And, and <laughs> That's like the rudest, just random. Like, what is that person's <laughs> life like? Where they're like, you are really just this way. No, but it was it was random too because I don't think we had been posting there. I don't, I don't even think there was like a, a recent episode where it was we were talking about anything like that. And I remember it just, it just zinged you. It zinged me because I was like. Number one, yeah. do I present on the podcast like I'm this like wild animal in the sack? Like I don't feel like I ever, maybe I do. I, I don't ever feel like I, I try. I don't get that impression. I don't ever feel like I'm just like, well, you know, him and I and da, 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 da. I'm like really the only thing is the balls on the eyes. Yes. That's my, and I think that's, that's my like, that's my thing. Right. So I'm kind of like, that's like, I like to throw out because I, I do like the reaction from people right. because they're like, excuse right. me. Right. It is Because it's not like balls, bizarre. because it's not like balls on the mouth or in the mouth. Yeah. It's like, okay. It's not it's like, like a tea bagging. It's like, I like, I like them on my you eyes. Like a spa treatment of balls. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and then I think the only other thing that I'll bring up is, um, is in a manic state when I, when my bipolar is in the full effect and big, I'm in a fan of that swing. Okay, you know what? <laughs> and, I was, <laughs> and I'm in a state of mania. Love I love a bit of mania. Yeah. I, I, you know, I then will get, a, I'll get wilder as far as sex goes, but I'm like, I don't feel like in general, I've presented that way on the podcast because the truth of the matter is I feel like I'm very, I feel like I'm just kind of in the middle. Mm. Would you say? I feel like I'm just like, I'm, I'm like, I, I like sex, but I'm not like back when I was younger, it was like, I'd like wanted to have sex constantly. I would say that it's, it's yeah, there's a manic le level to it. So when you're more manic, then uh -huh. things get more, you know, wild comparatively. But I wouldn't say that you're like this wild person, but what I would say is that you're down for anything. I think that's more the thing is it's not so much that you're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, you're going crazy. It's more just kind of like, 
I'm down if, to try if anything. If the moment le- starts starts to feel like something might happen and we pursue it, you're never just like, no. It's always like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, you know what no, I, mean? I like, I like, um, I myself am not someone who, I'm not like, I'm going to take the reins and be like, let's try this, this wild new thing. But if you're presenting like, hey, would you want to try da da da? I'm always like, yeah, let's try it. it sure, sounds fun sure, or whatever. Sure. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm down for whatever. Down for anything. I'm always down to try new things. Yeah. But I, but I've also, I don't feel like I'm. Is just there anything this, we haven't done that you want to try? I mean, right here, right now. Right here, right now. Subscribe to our OnlyFans. I'd have to think about that one. Mm. I'd have to think about that one. Yeah, I guess now that I'm thinking about it on the podcast, like when we'll bring up stories. Oh, that, was, that was that was ready. What? Let me think about that. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, bam. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. I don't have one. I don't have oh, one. I'm oh. saying now that I think about it on the podcast, and we'll tell stories. Be like, oh, we were role playing or whatever. It's always it's it maybe sounds wilder than it is because it happens sometimes, and it's just like when I'm down to when if you're like trying it out, whatever. Mm-hmm, I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, sounds great. Down to try it, whatever. And then we have a good time. But I feel like in general, I'm no Megan Fox. You're not no MGK, blood. no, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Feet up. <laughs> Give me one second. I like the idea of like me trying to plan this like vampire wedding with you, and I'm like, babe, drink my blood, and you're like, you're on the floor, just put the ring on, and you're like, feet up. <laughs> like you trying to be Megan Fox, and like uh, within a second, like, you're like, trying, sorry, feet up. I'm, I'm just trying. Lightheaded so, on this I'm blood trying talk. so hard to be Megan Fox, so hard. Oh my god. Um. Okay. Let's see. What has your biggest fight in marriage been? LOL. Love to start drama on the pod. We love it. Uh, so biggest fight in marriage. <sighs> uh. <laughs> um, I, I, I have mine. Like I, not my grievance, but like my idea of what it is. What do you think? What do you? I would say it's one of two things. Okay. It's finances, like it's it it start oh, okay. it starts because of money. I get that's not our biggest. Fight no, we don't just, fight ever about money. It's more like you no, just don't want to talk. No, about we it. fight. Yeah, we so fight. If I ever go, hey, babe, we need to talk about this. I it's just literally like, run ah! away. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fight. It's no, the conversation never happens. That's maybe our most frequent argument, though, where you're like, Jessica, we need to talk about it. the taxes are coming up, and I'm like, I don't want to hear about and it. He's like, ah, <laughs> um, family. Oh, okay. Family. Got it. Uh huh. Our our, I would say the I in my opinion one of the biggest fights in our relationship is due to one of us. My family. Yeah, your family. Yes. And me being like, and it was never, and it's never <coughs> like, it's never like I like I have. When it comes to trying to think of what right way to put this, it's not like screw your family. It's like I want you to be on the same page. Yeah. At, I want you to be on the same page as me about thoughts and m- ways to move forward with your family dynamic. And for a long time, that wasn't happening, um, which isn't then fair of me because. I'm not the one. It's not actually my family. And I was like pushing that. But then you were also then resisting maybe seeing certain things, you know. I don't know what you're talking about. It's really weird. <laughs> no, we used to have just knock down drag outs about the family. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. It's, That's it, changed uh, in the past few years. For yeah, sure. we haven't done that in a while. No. Once I, think, I got on your team, we have, we stopped fighting. It's yeah, weird. 100%. It's Once crazy. you started to agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy how peaceful yeah, life is. It's amazing. Become. Once you just once bend you start to my to, will, once you start I, to agree with me, it's, 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 it's really unbelievable <laughs> how smooth life goes. No, I mean, it's so. Cr- family's one of those really weird ones where it's like, it's it's really hard to have it work out. And you, like, you know, like it's the classic thing oh, mother in law, father in law, whatever. It's like, it's like the classic archetype of like, oh, the in laws are coming over, right? Like, it's really hard. Like, yeah to manage that and especially people who feel like protective about family even if it's not even yeah because i think there's a difference too of like you wanted to feel heard Mm -hmm. and i didn't want to feel rejected by family rejected or or from you i didn't want to feel like 
you had issues, even though the issues were a hundred percent correct and you were so right in having them. There's like this, you both want the same thing, which is like, you want to be on, you want them to be on your team. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I also think what had happened too was that wasn't then fair on my end and it was immature was I was what the things that I was seeing were things that, um, and that I had experienced were things that, uh, were very real for you that there was trauma because of. And instead of me being kind of like, Hey, let's gently talk through this. Like, have you felt this way? Did you experience this? And like, how do you feel about it now? I was like selfishly kind of like, well, I've felt felt these things. And if you don't feel them, then you're like, you know, turning a blind eye to the situation. Da 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 da. You know what I mean? And you just hadn't, you like, it, it was like, no, if like you had absolutely experienced these things and and you just needed time to process that. And I was kind of like, process it on my time because I'm feeling them now. Yeah, but at the same time, if I'm being real, like I never realized how unique my family was. And <laughs> also like, you know, how difficult it is to assimilate into my family. And so... You know, when you started seeing it with my brother's relationships too, and then you're just kind of, then you're like going outside and you start realizing like, oh, my family is super unique. And if you're not like just like them, it can be brutal. Mm -hmm. So that was also another thing is I never really understood the depth of like what it was like because your your mom and dad were always like cool with me and we were always had a great time together. So I didn't know what it was like to kind of have to force myself to change my personality in order to assimilate into a family yeah, which is like brutally hard I, and, and, I, I, and and if you ha- if you and if you don't feel like your partner's like on your team 100% no matter what then it can feel very alone so i could i could only imagine what that must have been like well and it was a weird it's a weird dynamic too right because because my family my mom and dad and my side of the family are very top level, right? Yeah. So we're just about like, let's have a good, good time. time. Let's let, let's have a drink Bust together. Wine, let's, let's have some food together. Talk, we'll have fun, random conversation. Yeah. And we keep it very top level. Like we do not. Go and deep. that's an our problem where it's like, we do not look at each other and express how we're feeling. And, and I was then the weirdo in my family because I was always wanting to go like really deep and intense. Right. And like everyone was like, what is wrong with you? Um, so that was in your, so then it's like, we have this relationship where it's like, you can always hop into my family right? and you you can come, we have a great time. It's always top level. It's always low key. It's always fun, whatever. And then, and then I go to your family and it's immediate intense. Right. And, and where my family is kind of like, I could bring no shit, you know, obviously my, my family adores you and always has. Yeah. But like I could bring anyone into my family, right? And, and get the it same would, result. It would be like it, it's kind of like, oh, Jess loves him, so or is into him, so yeah, so, come yeah. have a drink, hang exactly. out. We're not going to talk about anything intense. And with your family, it's like it's immediate intense. And if you're not at that same level of intensity on the same page, there's we're going to figure out why not. Exactly. And so it's like it's an extreme. It's two. It's two total uh, opposite ends of the spectrum, and both are too much. Both of our families are too much in that way. Let's be very clear. Well, one's not enough, and one's too much. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I'm yeah, saying it's right, too right. extreme, right. like on on either side. So, what what fight would, did you think? Oh, um, <laughs> say that, it. that one. No, say um, it. I was gonna say our biggest fight: work and scheduling. Oh yeah. Yeah. Big time. That's a fun one. Big time. So Evan um is one of the is the best and that's what's crazy <laughs> about this. And moving on. We're just wired differently. Like I'm very much like I want a schedule at least a week in advance. Like I need to know what the day is going to look like so that I can plan out when I'm recording this or I'm editing this or I have this call or whatever and then I know if I need to pick up the little one here and then you da 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 and you are very wired in the way where you kind of live life in the flexible zone Mm -hmm. and your work also can require that a lot too it's very like you'll have a schedule and then the day before everything will change because an artist will shift something and then everything has to shift and there's never any like set hours right it's like you could have a day that you're gone from like 10 till 6 
and then you're heading home or you could have a day where you leave early in the morning and you're like, I'm going to be here all night, like whatever. And so we can get so into it, fights. It, go, it goes well and <laughs> she loves it. And we can get into big yeah. fights and all of a sudden, because then it's like, you know, I'm feeling like I'm having to then shift my schedule around all the it's time. It's not easy. I mean, it's not easy for anybody, uh, to be honest with you, like working in this industry and working in music and, and, and with different people, it's like it's, things shift, things are crazy, hours change. You don't know when you're going to be home. You know, it's a lot of like, oh, yeah, I'll be home at seven. Oh, actually, yeah, this whole thing now we're home at 10. Oh, actually, last minute, I got to do this next four. Oh, actually, I got to fly to New York for four days. Like, I'm sorry, I got to go. You know, yeah. like that is not conducive. And that's why most people in the industry are single. Right. So the so having a child. I'm a weirdo with the kid and the wife. They're always yeah. like, whoa, yeah. what's that like, man? Like, So then having a child and having a partner. Not a That deal. then it's, it's, it's tricky. And. I'm grateful because working on the podcast does allow flexibility because it's right. like this is our podcast so we can shift times and shift schedules. It is and, the best career you can yeah, have if we that need fits to. my life. But yeah. where then my bitterness can come in sometimes is that I feel like I'm like, okay, well, because that's an option, because I don't have this nine to five where it's like, sorry, you take, Ev, you, you I, have have to, to, I have get, to go take, into take work. Of, yeah. I'm the one who always has to shift my yes. schedule because then you're working with more people who then can't shift their schedule. So I'm then always having to change stuff last minute um, you know, to make sure that like Ember is good to go and that, you know, whatever, and that we get the stuff that we need to. So that's then what, when the mom will get real, will get real mm -hmm, agitated mm -hmm. sometimes because I'm like, I don't want to shift my schedule. I had everything lined up and now I have to make it hectic and da, 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 right. da, because I'm wired in a scheduling way. Right. But it's like, it's not just you. It's like, then I will be, you know, annoyed that it's hard on you and not again, it, it always comes down to me not realizing the stress it puts on you. That's kind of generally like how these things, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, I'm just not, I'm not putting myself in your shoes realizing like, Oh yeah, I'm working hard and I'm still having to kind of like mold around his schedule and you know, whatever it's brutal. Like there's no question about it. It can be tough. That's tough. It's it tough. can be tough, but we're, working through it <laughs> um let's see here lots of bedroom questions how do you keep things fresh in the bedroom favorite position lots of bedroom questions um why not let's answer them okay, let's do it favorite position hmm Uh, that's tough. I would say, I would say maybe you on top. Okay. Uh, any specific cowgirl, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not reverse. <laughs> no. I mean, I like it, but it's like, I feel like reverse cowgirl can get a little complicated. Reverse cowgirl is like acrobatic. It looks hot, but it just can get a little it's, complicated. It's for show. It's acrobatic. And let's be very clear. I love myself, but I, but an acrobat, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I love myself and I'm good at a lot of things. Flying through the air in Cirque du Soleil is not, no, it's not that. It's just, acrobatics, not so much. It's my just thing. Like, She's up for anything, but she can't bend any which way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say like regular cowgirl is like, I think you can, here's my thing. I think you can get a lot done in that position. Okay. Okay. If you, if you catch my drift, I think many, yes. I think both people can be pleased very intensely in that position. Yeah, I mean, depending on the person, but for between the two, between us two, yes. Yeah. Agreed. Um, hmm. I would say, I would say doggy style is my favorite. For real? Uh huh. Okay. But I will orgasm the quickest in missionary. You on top. Yeah. Oh no, I love to soak. You know I love yeah, soaking. Yeah, you do love soaking. I love soaking. That might be my favorite. But soaking in missionary. Yes. I think that would have to be it. Do people know what the soaking is? So if you don't know what a soaking situation is, it's when um uh in this case the penis is in the vagina and it just stays still. 
Mm-hmm. And you just kind of just you just say stay still. And sometimes I can will move around. Yes. But then the penis does not. <laughs> right. That is a soak. I call it the mannequin. You call it the soak. I like that mannequin. You That's like good. That? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like where you, you 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 leave it in and you don't move and you just kind of let that be a, for a, mo- a minute. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's interesting because I like the the balls eyes situation right. which is kind of a form of tea bagging and soaking i've kind of got like a oh interesting kind of like english breakfast thing going on <laughs> <laughs> where's the po- and then are you then the poached egg like what are what is this <laughs> next oh my gosh okay um Oh, if you had another kid, any name ideas? What names were vetoed with Ember? Do you have any name ideas? I uh, wanted to name, if we didn't name Ember, Ember, I liked Phoenix. That was yeah, mine. That was nice. You liked Miles. Yeah. But now everyone has it's named been, their... It got played out. It, it, I, I was into it before, but he's into I it. I still love the name Miles. Yeah, I think great. it's such but a wonderful way name. Way too many people did it. What about now? Any names... I could just pick one of the names of Ember's classmates. <laughs> like She's got some wild names. Star Child. <laughs> and, and you know, the the Emperor. I mean, it's just like the amount, the names in Ember's class these days, it's like everyone's trying to one-up each other. It's just like... It's so, it's bizarre. Cruiser it's, missile. It's it's straight up Ember's Ember has the most average name in her yes. classroom. She's just like, like she's like boring. Just looks like oh Ember. Which do you? How do you feel when people call her Amber? Drives me. I correct him every time. Why does it get? It makes me so. I, I'm. I used to. This is a fact. I used to get so like ugh, when people would uh, talk about how. They could mis- mis- when people would mispronounce their names and they'd be like, it would irritate them. And if someone would then, like, I'd hear someone correct someone and like, you know, it's not, it's, ugh, I'm trying to think of a, a common name. It's not, it's not Marianne, it's Marianne, right? Right, 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 right. I'd be like, come on. And now I feel very, I feel like a bitch yeah. for having judged that yep. because now having a kid who people constantly call her Amber, not Ember, yep. it drives me up a wall oh yeah i feel the exact same way every time someone goes oh hey amber I go actually it's ember same same here i and always like, correct probably obnoxious them. but it's very important to me it's so important to me too i'm like no she is ember she is not amber yes it makes me so agitated and i will correct them every time too it makes i have i'm happy Even that you also a do a family member <laughs> one of our family members recently texted and said something about amber and i thought to myself or not. And that shows and that you exactly what family the dynamic problem. we're dealing with. <laughs> oh, the one grandkid. Okay, oh, cool. You one of them. Cool. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> oh my gosh. And a very important question submitted from Game of Roses podcast. Oh. Evan, if you only had one hour with Tyler Cameron, what would you do together? Hmm. This is very important. This is, I mean, this is very heavy. Hold on. Let me just pray about this. I feel like. Ask God. I feel like I'd have to do something athletic. Okay. Because then he'd be engaged. You know what I mean? Do you think he'd he'd let his walls down? If He'd let his walls down. I'd be like, let's go wakeboarding. Oh, that's fun. You know what I mean? That's Because he likes the beach. He likes the boats. He likes the thing. He's, it's athletic, It's but it's also fun and drinking. So we're drinking on the boat mm-hmm. and we're like wakeboarding, having a good time. I feel like I could mac, get the most out of him if we did like wakeboarding. Do you know what I want to tell you? What? You didn't watch Hannah Brown's season. No. And on his uh, fantasy suite date when she, or was it his hometown or fantasy? Uh, maybe it was hometown. He took her on a boat. Nailed so it. I just want you to know that you I'm you you see him. I see him. And you know him. I am him. I look like him. <laughs> I mean, I know I am him. I mean, I get I get him. I'm, that's, what I'm, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> what beverage would you bring on? Because I know you'd bring a oh, beverage. There's only one beverage we'd be crushing the whole time. White Claws. Okay. And he'd just be like, hell yeah, dude. 
Have you read my book or whatever? You know? Would you read your would you read his book before you went and hung out with him? That's creepy, no. That's too much. Do you think he'd be turned off by that or do you think he'd be into that? Because part of me feels like Tyler no. Cameron would be turned no, on by the weird. fact that, that someone is ingesting his book. No, his I, honestly, I would feel, if, I wrote, if I wrote a book and then someone was going to come hang out with me and then they had read my book, I would be a little bit like, we're not like peers anymore. You're kind of like my fan. But he knows that none of us are his peers we're, and we're all his friends. I'm his peer. What are you talking about? We're not friends? <laughs> You know what's so sad is that you and Grayston have really done everything you can to not reach out to single, him and not even a nibble. Not even a nibble. Which honestly is really disrespectful. Yeah, well, that's point. why I'm getting off of him. I'm starting to lose it. Who have you moved on to? Kieran Knightley. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and next question. What's your favorite vacation story together? And when is Ember getting an agent? Cute. Mm. Ember will be her own agent, to be yeah, honest. She, she will be, be cutting her own deals. She will yeah. not be letting anyone take any percentage of anything from her because She's that is just how Ember is wired. Our favorite vacation story together. Well, I did love when we went to New York Fashion Week together, speaking of New York that earlier. That was one of the most... That was an absolute blast. That was legendary. I loved being able to take you with me because it was like... At that time, you hadn't really seen me at work. No, so, so you, I, you got to show me around. I got to show you my world a little more, and I got to flex a little bit for you. And I it was cool too because up to that point, you had always been coming to my mm -hmm. like in music industry parties yep. and cool events and stuff like that. And so she got to kind of. Flip and then the I script. blew yours out of the water. You kind of did. <laughs> you kind of did. But it was fun. I'm like, I got to yeah. wine and dine you. It was a blast. And take you to all these fun parties, yes. and we didn't sleep for seven days straight. It was insane. We went to bed every single night, maybe around like seven or eight in the morning, and then had to be up by 10 and start getting ready for like another show. And I gotta say, I'm impressed by us, because everyone else around us was doing um, massive amounts of cocaine massive amounts of cocaine yeah, and awake. we weren't doing any cocaine we were just drinking and we we kept up with them we really did our adrenaline really pushed us through i will say that was very impressive it was it was and i don't think anyone believed us no. that we were not on drugs because we were able to just keep doing it so now let me tell you by the time that we were flying home I thought that I was about to see God. I just thought, like, fly me to the nearest hospital. <laughs> yeah, no, it yeah. was like, I got to go straight to the hospital, and I have to get a hundred of the IVs. You're like, I, I don't need it now, but I will need to be resuscitated. So <laughs> yeah, just get so, me to a hospital, because so within funny. 20 minutes, I will need the, like, like. Do you remember shot. we we got into the cab? Yes. We got into the taxi, mm -hmm. and uh, the second... Oh, you mean private car? Yeah, the private oh, sorry, car. Sorry, sorry, the, sorry. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to do that for you. That was... The, no, what are you talking about? No, we, no, we had private cars the whole time because of who I was working with. Right. But I'm oh, saying then, on then the way home... And you, and I was like, yeah, thanks, <laughs> <laughs> It was all all the, the folks that I was working with would get the private cars. And I was like, Evan, look at... We yeah, entered hello. and exited how we truly are. And yes. then we lived yes. on someone And then we, we left in a taxi. I love a taxi. Um, And uh, we got in the taxi. We fell asleep on the way to the airport. Yes. Remember that? Yes. Sleeping, and then we somehow woke up and got into the plane and immediately we both fell asleep on the plane. Oh, that was gnarly. What a, what a week though. I remember you shaking me awake when we got landed on the runway at LAX. Yeah. We were like, Jessica. Like, I didn't even wake up when we landed. I was just yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Oh, off of that, another travel question. After the pandemic, what spot are you finally traveling to internationally? Oh, internationally. Oh, that makes me think another, I can't even believe I didn't say this. What? Our honeymoon when we were in oh, Italy. Oh, yeah. Italy was unbelievable. That was absolute magic. Yeah. You know what? Italy, that, that takes the cake, I think. I would love to go back. I would also like to, uh, once the, the pandy is uh, finito, I would like to go visit family in Switzerland again. I haven't seen cool. my family over there in a long time. Yeah. There's also something too about like being young and broke and traveling that like it does make it more special mm -hmm. because you saved up every dime to get over there. 
and then you're kind of like having a good time but you're not living you know you're not like you're living pretty low and just trying to survive and then like something nice will happen so someone will like you know you'll be surprised by how good of a meal you had because you could only afford a certain level so i think there's something too to like young traveling stories are so epic because when you look back you actually think oh there wasn't a lot that happened but it was so meaningful you to you at the time because mm-hmm. you didn't have the well even when you and i went to um when we went to italy for our honeymoon we were definitely like on a quite a strict budget that's what i'm saying like and it was i remember so... i had spent everything on the ring and everything on this trip like t- to the point like where we came back and i had like nine dollars left like so it was just like we went hard we, we had a great time but oh, it yeah. definitely wasn't like but it was carefree and but it was i felt like it was then you know we really appreciated like everything was appreciated all the moments mm-hmm. all the moments um i there was a time okay so when we were in italy <laughs> We stayed in this little flat and and it was right above this little bakery. So then every morning we'd go down and we'd load up our backpack with like fresh bread and meat. And then we'd walk to the nearest cafe that had cappuccinos and don't do this. People don't smoke cigarettes. But at the time you and I were doing a little smoking. Uh-huh, it was the music uh-huh. industry biz. Okay. <laughs> and so we'd wake up, we'd have a cigarette yeah. and have a cappuccino. Oh, that was awesome. And at this around, like amazing cafe and walk around with our bread all day mm-hmm. and it was just so wonderful but then there was one night that we were like okay we're going to a very fancy restaurant yes it was like the one night that we're like we're really we're gonna drop some cash and we're gonna go to this fancy restaurant so we got all dolled up mm-hmm. go to this restaurant and i still to this day have no idea what happened or who they thought we were they thought we one of us or both of us were s- someone someone one of the one of the servers must have just been like thought they recognized us from something because we walked in and they were like oh my god welcome welcome and it was like what is happening and they took us to their nicest table and they like gave us almost everything for free yes it was like everything was on the house. They were bringing us bottles of wine that were a fortune. Yeah. And we were downing bottles of wine. They were like, can we get you a cigarette? And they were like bringing out and, and they were like, they were going to across the street to yep. like, and I'm like, what is going like, on is right happening? now? They like brought music over to our table. And, and I was like, you know, I'm like, am I in my head about this right now? Cause so I'm, then I'm checking out the other tables yeah. to be like, is this happening? Is this just the service at this right. restaurant? And it wasn't happening with anybody else. No. So I still to this day have no idea who they thought one of us It was just were. free everything all night. But it was so unbelievable because we were so prepped to be like ouch this is gonna hurt we don't have the money to do this this is gonna be so painful and we ended up getting pretty much everything paid for of course we left a lofty tip yes. but they were just paying it was for like everything a candlelight dinner on top of Ugh. this it was i mean it was pure romance go to italy. <laughs> take me to italy um Okay, let's answer a few more, and then I need to eat some food. Yes, go. <laughs> yes. Um, if, Get back to work. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> if 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 you switched bodies for a day, could you pull it off acting like each other so no one noticed? There's no way. Zero There's chance. absolutely no way. Zero chance. You are such a mystery to me. I watch you every single day. <laughs> I see you every single day. <laughs> the wink. Oh, hey, my baby. God. <laughs> I've said this on the podcast before. International man of mystery, baby. (laughs) I've said this on the podcast before, but one of the things that will forever, like, keep me excited about Evan, but it also then frustrates me, is that I still, like, don't, I still never quite know. So there are certain mannerisms that I feel like I could do, but I don't know if I could act like you conversationally like right. i don't know what i would even say which is weird because i've known you for forever and right. i don't think i could pull it off i agree the same you don't think you could pull me off i feel like you have me down pretty well when you'll imitate me you use all my phrases that i don't even realize that i do and you know that i always i have horrible posture so you would just always you'd walk <laughs> around and you'd, have, you'd be hunched over and yeah I, I don't think i could do it there's mm-hmm. so many subtleties with you and so many like bubbly things and i'm I wish I was more bubbly. You wish you were more bubbly yeah. in general? Yeah. How do I be more bubbly? Mm-hmm. Just, just do it. Just notice the, the, the good things in life. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 
Okay, what is one thing your partner does that turns you on that they have no idea about? I <sighs> Hmm. I feel like you you probably know this. That's what I'm saying. You have no idea about. But I, no, like I you probably balls prob on my eyes. <laughs> you oh. probably know this. But when Evan is, when I hear Evan on the phone being bossy, <laughs> it turns me on. <laughs> when I hear him on the phone and he's talking with people at work and he's like not irritated, but you're very like stern or something. If you're if if something happens. If people who are working with you are frustrating you and you're being very like stern and direct yeah. about what's going on and what needs to happen, that turns me on. Or when I hear when you come home and you tell me a story about something that happened at work and then you had to like, you know. Kick some butts. Yeah. I'm like, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> you're unbelievable. You're unbelievable. What about me? I feel like. Everything. Yeah, right? I, I, I'm trying to think of something that doesn't turn me on, which yeah, is crazy. It's tough. It's um, tough life. This is the corniest thing in the world. <laughs> when you're really smiley, like when you really, when you're just like, like being light, you know, when you're having a light day, mm -hmm. like that just turns me on because it's like there's something about you, you like you. You under stress is not your normal self. Yeah. And you, when you're not as stressed, is your normal self. And your normal self is just, it, it brings so much like lightness to me. And it brings so much like, it, it relieves stress off my shoulders when I see you just like being yourself and bubbly and fun. So when I see you bubbly and fun, that's when, I, when I'm going to grab you. <laughs> like that. That's very sweet. Yeah, like That's your your sweet. laugh, your laugh is, is your laugh and smile. That definitely like gets me going. So corny. I'm so sorry to everyone. That was the worst. That was the opposite of MGK Megan Fox. Yeah, they would be they would be puking they hearing be puking. that. They're like that was, gross. That was you, you're turned on by her being happy and smiling. Dogs I freaked you out. <laughs> The dog just scratched at the door and she didn't know that I had let them outside and so that she thought someone was trying to get into the studio. Oh <laughs> Her face. If you want to rewind and see actual real, real nervous Jessica, like actually it, it happened in real time, that was the face. I'm like shaking. Yeah, that was the face. Well, someone just asked, they asked if there are any ghost updates and the truth of the matter is that I did download... Um, these apps recently and I'm sure they're all like I'm sure it's it has to all be fake but I was looking up like proper ghost apps like what are ghost apps that ghost hunters use like what are ones that they have created themselves or sign off on yeah and so I downloaded them in the house because I was starting to feel a little it was kind of a weird day I was feeling um many times like I felt like I was hearing things kind of again then I was, at one point I was sitting working um, on the couch and I just felt like cold air all of a sudden like burst on my neck and and it was just out of nowhere everyone everywhere else was warm in the mm -hmm. room and so it was kind of starting to freak me out so I downloaded these apps and I was going around our house yeah and <laughs> there I was seeing um I forget the technical name for it but where it's like heat sensitive. So then it was showing you Thermal. where there's, yeah, yeah. Like there's the form of if there's something there. And so I was walking around the house and I found a few forms in the house. It freaked me out. And Evan was. Not and, a so, fan. <laughs> and so I was like, and of course, of course, all of them were in our damn bedroom. Yes. So I'm walking around. It's nighttime. This was actually last week when Evan was right before Evan was recording with Grayston. So I'm in the in the house. I'm going around. I'm like, you know what? I'm not seeing anything here. And there's nothing in the kitchen or in the hallway. Like I thought there may be. I'm going into darker corners of the house. And then I walk into the bedroom and there was like three figures in the bedroom. Correct. And I'm like, Evan, come here. You have to look at this. And Evan was not pleased. Listen, here's the thing with the ghost thing. I don't necessarily like think about it i'm also something not someone who's um exceptionally like believes in everything but the one thing i don't play with is like dark spirit stuff like that stuff scares me so bad so like i like watching movies about it but like real life if someone's like oh my god let's go do a ghost tour it's like i'm all set no and then that I'm stuff is so freaky to me like i'm not down with the ghost stuff because it's like my thing is this 
best okay, if it's if it's real best case scenario you like see one right worst case scenario it, it possesses you <laughs> and you murder your whole family i'm kind of like the risk reward is so small no one ever says best case scenario you meet a ghost their best friends they tell you the future and you live happily ever after with your ghost i like, mean you don't know best case scenario and all this ghost stuff is like that you're like oh that was kind of creepy and i heard something that's best case worst case is so bad yeah i understand that perspective but it also gives me a little bit of a thrill how do you feel about the like okay so then i i, sh I showed you the forms in our in our bedroom and then that night when we went to bed we were laying in bed and evan was starting to freak out because i was like they're all in the room with us like how weird I'm are all, you <laughs> i'm okay with that I'm, I'm all set. We don't have to bring them up. I think ghosts want to be left alone if they're real. I don't think they want to be messed with. I don't think they want to be brought back. I, that, that's, that's always the thing. Every scary movie is like, they didn't want to be bothered. And then all of a sudden, but it's what like... If they, what if they were, feel like I'm ignoring them? I think that's better. Okay. So just leave them alone. But I've been wanting to t talk to them. <sighs> Do not do this. <laughs> well, what I then did the next day, because then up. I was really caught up in this moment, is I downloaded another app. And that app to me just felt kind of hokey. This the second app that I downloaded that you can like speak to them. Yeah. So then I was walking around the room again. And then I went into Ember's room and there was a being like right in front of her bed, like protecting the bed. And... Then I downloaded the, uh, I, I then opened up the other app, the thermal one, and I checked and the thermal one showed that there was something right there too. So then I started to freak out a little bit. So then I went back on the other app and I was like, I'm going to try to talk to this being that's in front of the bed. And that ended up kind of freaking me out because when I asked um, who this being was, it was... Uh, it wasn't like a ghost. It was like a spirit from another yeah. place. And then I'm like, what are you here for? Yeah. And it said that it was the protector of the divine spark. Yeah. Which is crazy because Ember, spark. Right. And we'd always call her our little spark. And that freaked me out. So yeah. then I ran out of the room. But I was also like, it was a beautiful interaction because yeah. I'm like, is this some alien being in our daughter's bedroom yeah. who is protecting this divine spark? Sure, sure. This divinity living in our home? Is our is our daughter a, div a divine being? Or should I start worshiping her? I think we already do. I mean, I think the, if according to our lifestyle <laughs> and what we do with our time, I think we're already in a state of worship. That's very true. That's very true well or she has subjugated us to be her servants i can't decide if we're <laughs> worshiping her or if she has she has enforced, she has enforced us to serve her it's something I like can't, that it feels like a bit of both it's something like that um well there are so many questions and i feel Better. bad i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna do you should screenshot them i'm gonna screenshot a bunch of them and at another time we can answer them on a different podcast episode yep How about or we that? could do a um well, I guess we could live Q&A together on Instagram or something like that. Oh, yeah. We could do one but, of those. Mm -hmm. Either or. I'll screenshot them These because good there were so many good ones and you all really pulled through and I really appreciate that. You all always you ask guys. wonderful questions. I appreciate them. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for subbing. Thanks for I appreciate Thanks you. For it's always nice me. to know I have a, uh, a quick, you know, just a quick sub, you know? Yep. Thanks for dragging me out of bed. <laughs> You're like, I've done three of these this week. Thank you so much. Can I just have a morning? No, it's nice. It was yeah. nice to talk and hang I out love with you. you. I love you too. And um, love you broad. Sending grace yes. in our well. Yes. Wishes. Get better, homie. Um, and tune in next week. Becca and I um, at the top of the week have a episode that we just recorded that will be coming out. And it's wild. I had a very wild, embarrass another embarrassing, really big situation that happened to me. And we talk about that. And it's just a lot. And then on Thursday, I believe Jessica Lignato is coming back. Ooh. And then the bros. And hopefully Grayson will be better. But uh, yeah, back in action. We love you all and chat soon. Chat soon. I put these sunglasses back on. Oh, yeah. Go back into my natural habitat. And this is actually what life is like. <sighs> you know, that you, you got the fun, just kind of like podcast version, but this is actually what it's like to don't, live with Jessica. Don't talk to me for the rest yeah, of the day. Yeah, exactly. Don't talk to me. Feed me and be gone. All right. I should, I should drop things off in your room, just like 
platters Please. of things you want and then just leave her alone. That would be nice. All right. Peace and love. Bye. Bye.